Welcome to Better World Technologies in the chat room. In the chat room is a dynamic interview series where industry leaders, innovators, and experts gather to share their insights on the ever evolving landscape of technology and business. I'm your host, Matt Bauer, co-founder and director of Better World Technology, and we're excited to have in the chat room with us today, Eric <laughs> Torres, who has had an integral role in building out the MSP space over the last 15, 20 years with companies like Datto, Scalepad, and who now is VP of Channel and Community Engagement at PAX8, critical partner to Better World and thousands of MSPs globally. Welcome, Eric. Thank you. Thank you for having me, and thank you for the uh, the warm introduction. So, Eric, let's start with your background. Bring us up to date uh, with your start in technology and and what's led you to PAX8 in your current role with them. Sure, sure. My uh, my journey started a long time ago. Uh, in the MSP space uh, in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, I uh, I applied for a job at an MSP as uh, entry level sales rep, so a cold caller, business development. Uh, I cold called for eight long, brutal hours a day for the first part of my my journey here, and uh, and helped build that MSP to uh, to one of the largest in in that area, um, and then from. From that, I started taking on different roles, sales marketing, um, eventually getting into leadership position, a leadership position, and uh, really digging into um, our processes and procedures and, and the vendor world and who we were partnering with to, to take care of our clients. From there, I, I made the leap to the vendor side and uh, joined Datto uh, back in 2015 and uh, spent almost seven years at Datto. Uh, helping MSPs grow their their uh, business continuity practices. Um, I left Datto and joined Scalepad. I uh, was there for two and a half years in, in helping um, MSPs improve their, their client success and uh, the relationships that they had with their clients. Uh, and then uh, from there, I joined back with my old boss uh, from my, my Datto days, uh, Mr. Rob Ray, uh, he came calling, and uh, and the the move over to Pax Eight was about four months ago, and uh, I haven't looked back since. Awesome. Well, well, tell us a little bit about your your current role with Pax Eight. What are you What are you looking at? Yeah, so I oversee the channel and community team. Uh, basically, we are the the faces of the company. We're the evangelists. We're out there uh, traveling all over the globe. Uh, talking with MSPs, meeting with them, finding out uh, what's working, what's not working, and then helping share all all the the knowledge and learnings that we've we've taken on over the past uh, well my entire career. Um, so it it is spreading the the word about how Pax Eight truly helps our partners and uh, and how we can further improve our our services for them. Awesome. Well, we can we can validate that for sure because uh, Pax Eight's been a Big help to better world on our journey, and uh, I don't think we could do it without you all. So um, that is that is the truth. Uh, so let's shift to the bigger picture. Uh, let's talk about you know kind of advancements in the marketplace, storefronts, opportunities, recommendations, things like that that are really uh, uh, at the top of the the trend list, I guess. Sure. Uh, well, it started back when, when PAX 8 was founded. Uh, how do we disrupt the market? Mm -hmm. How do we add more than just your typical distributor model that's out there? Because uh, truly the distributor model is, in my mind, is kind of broken. I mean, it's just an order taker. It's it's where you go and get goods. So PAX 8 has always been out there looking at what kind of value add could we bring. And that is coming has come to full fruition through some of the advancements we made uh, middle of last year uh, with such such things as our storefront and, and opportunities um, and our recommendations. So uh, just getting right into it, uh, we're able to look at all of our partners as a whole. So 39,000 partners that are out there across the globe, what are they, how are they consuming cloud applications? How are they selling them? What what kind of trends are we seeing? Uh, you know, drilling down into specific verticals. What, uh, for example, what are, you know, what are, what's the financial industry using when it comes to cloud applications and how can MSPs uh, 
help them with that. So we're able to make some recommendations. We're able to put those together for our partners to say, hey, that that client of yours fits this particular mold that we're seeing out there. Here's the types of software. Here's the types of applications that that typical looking customer may be using. And then in turn, going to our partner saying, hey, you may want to talk to them about enhancing their security, or maybe it's it's something else on that network that uh, that they could be taking advantage of. So that's one aspect of the, the Opportunity Explorer that we have. Um, we've also built out a, a complete storefront. So in our eyes, and, and I think this is a, a tribute to, well, I shouldn't even say tribute, a result of COVID, the buying patterns have absolutely changed amongst people uh, across everything, every product that we consume. Um, things are different today than they were in the beginning of 2020. You know, we, when's the last time we went to a, a mall? When's the last time we went to a, you know, a clothing store to go, go find what we wanted? You know, I'm doing all of my shopping online. I'm, I do it almost all through Amazon. And, and right. it's because of, of the reviews. It's because you can see how others are consuming the product, what it looks like, what, what they have on, how they're using it. Same exact thing is happening right now in, in the IT world. There are users out there that want to do their homework. They want to go out there and figure out what's the best application for them, what's the best licensing for them, and then they're going to the MSP and saying, hey, I did my research, here's what I want. So Storefronts is a, a place where Pax8 partners can go in and, and control that environment. So think of it almost like, like an Amazon-like experience, but they only see what you want them to see. So if maybe it's just your preferred stack of solutions because you're the experts with those solutions. You can then offer that, that to your, your clients and say, hey, you want to do some shopping on your own? You want to go do your research? You have this whole storefront. It's customized just for you. Go take a look and let us know what you think. So that overall is, is what the marketplace is. It's truly connecting with those users that, that want to do their research and we are MSP focused. We want all of that business going directly through an MSP. So that's that's right. where we come into a play. And that's the changes that we've seen happening over the past few years. Yeah, I, th I think the main reason we go to the, the mall is uh, when it's so cold here in Denver, we, we, we take our dog there to take her for a walk. Uh, so I'm glad they're I'm glad they're still open. I don't know how much longer it'll be. But um, can you can you give us any any stats behind uh, the shift that's occurred there? And then I think we're going to we're going to jump to then another, uh, you know, COVID related, you know, something that advanced sure. very quickly in AI. Uh, we'll yeah. talk about that next. But any 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 uh, yeah. background or stats I, you have on this shift? Yeah, I mean, we we are constantly looking at at data and analyzing it. And one of the number that continues to just live rent free in my head is that within the next five years. And it's scary to say this, 2030, within the next five years, $17 trillion will run through, and that's trillion dollars of IT spent, will run through mm -hmm. a marketplace, will run through some sort of avenue where people can do that research and they can look on their own and they can figure out what they want to buy. And it's almost, you know, it, it, if you put this in comparison, um, Think of, of the App Store for Apple or Google Play Store. You know, people go to that store to get the applications for their phones. This is kind of the same thing. How many, how many of us are going to the direct vendor to get that app to put on our phone? We're not doing that. Mm -hmm. We're going to the Play Store because we can see the reviews. We can see that it's vetted, that it is a, a formidable solution for the, the challenge that we're having. This is the exact same. People are going to want to go to a place where they can shop for all of their cloud applications, know that that solution is vetted, know that there's MSPs out there that can that can manage that solution for them that's recommended by them, and that's what they're going to go and purchase. Wow, that's a, that's a huge shift. Um, so, uh, you know, add that up and you've got, you know, more, more GDP than probably a bucket of countries. So... Yeah, uh, it's actually that, that actually is... the the stats. Uh, it was more than Germany and oh, I forget the other country. <laughs> I think it was like Germany and Sweden combined. That that, that okay, in the next that's, five years, that that's that's significant. That's pretty formative. That's, yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. So so then uh, turning the tail, something that's on you know 
everybody's the tip of everybody's tongue or on their mind. Um, another big shift that occurred uh, that I think really advanced, you know, through COVID was uh, machine learning, AI, mm-hmm. um, you know, which whichever these these technologies it truly is. But uh, we call it AI for it's a lot easier to say, right? Um, a lot easier so to say. Yep. It, it be- became fundamental in in, in business, and uh, you know, give us your perspective on the the processes, the procedures, uh, the analytics for helping MSPs, you know, to automate things and to be better at what they do. And what do you see coming down the road there? Yeah, uh, the first point, whether it's machine learning or or AI, it's such a broad topic that uh, I think a lot of people are are a little afraid when they're talking about it because they don't quite understand the the full mm-hmm. use cases of it. But when you look at it, it's, it can it can be used in every aspect of our daily lives, and it's here and it's happening. and And whether whether you like it or not, we're going to have to adjust for this. People want automation, and there's ways that we can automate just about everything, freeing up resources, freeing up time to to focus on what really matters, and that's taking care of clients and that, that human interaction mm-hmm. that. AI can't do. So everything from internal processes and procedures, think of your day-to-day uh, use at work and your activities at work. What are the mundane tasks that you do every single day that you can then automate, that we can have this be second nature? We don't even think about it. It just happens for us. That's on the the processes side of the house. That's just on uh, service delivery and, and what you're thinking of. Then it comes to, okay, how can we use this to get new clients? Whether whether you are in the tech field or the financial industry or whatever industry it may be, how can we use this to help with our sales and marketing? How can we use this to help us close our business? And more and more, people are going to start using this to again, automate what they can and free up time in their day and and lower their expenses. So the future is is definitely here. And we at PAX8 are 100% all bought in on on what this looks like for us internally and what it looks like for our partners. But we are, we're actively building this out right now. Um, Everything from the day-to-day tasks, my own team, I, I went into an exercise Two weeks ago, for our leadership kickoff meetings, and uh, and they're asking about AI, and I'm I'm sitting there going, I'm, I'm the events guy, I'm out there traveling on the road. What what can AI do for me? And then as I started thinking about it, it was just regular tasks that I'm going, boy, if I didn't have to book my own flights anymore, if I didn't have to book my hotel rooms, if I could just have that be taken care of, and I can just say, I'm going to this event at this time boom, take care of it. Now I can focus on who's going to be at that event. What kind of relationships do I need? Do I need to do some outreach before that event? See, it frees up time. So we are looking at it from an internal process of what can we do to make our jobs better, faster, stronger? And then how do we use this technology into our own cloud marketplace? How do we make better recommendations? How do we help our clients sell more? How do we, how do we get them to, to see more of the, the value, their clients see more of the value that they provide? So there's an unlimited use cases for AI and that future is here and people need to get on it because those that aren't embracing it now will either be forced to in the very near future or they're going to get left behind. It's as simple as that. Yeah, I and I I think you know in our our business is a relationship business and it is uh, you know so many people jumped ahead with AI and like oh it's replacing humans and I think it's more about you know what we're looking at it and seeing it from the MSP realm is how does it augment what we're doing and help us do what we're doing better you know and uh, and that is taking care of the customer and uh, so we're seeing the best advances be in that. That place where we're still watching, you know, we're still involved. We have the people involved, but the people's uh, ability to serve is being increased because they're spending less time on some of the mundane stuff and more, you know, on on being prescriptive and reading the the tea leaves, you know. And, and AI does help help us do that a lot. So uh, yeah. the products yeah. seem to be matching that ethos, you know, that that are coming out um, with AI features. You know, if you look at the, the trends of, of what managed service providers, what you guys have gone through over years, over, over the past couple of decades, you know, it was, it was the thought of, of the digital transformation. Oh, everything's going to go digital. We got so much work to do and it's going to replace jobs, replace people. And 
No, people still need the experts out there. They still want that human interaction. They want their IT person coming in and, and taking care of them. Uh, same thing with the cloud mm -hmm. and the shift to getting everything in the cloud. And, oh, there's no more on-prem hardware and, and all of this. It's just the next evolution in how managed service providers are that lifeline to the SMBs that are out there, to the small businesses that are out there. They need that trusted advisor, that that expert to guide them through everything with AI, everything with the security risks that are out there, and then just making sure that their their networks are the backbone of their business and, and help them run and make them run well. Totally agree. Well, let's uh, let's as we as we look to wrap up, uh, we could go on for for hours and uh, look forward to talking to you more at a lot of events about all these things. But uh, you know, looking ahead and into your crystal ball, uh, we have all the changes from COVID we talked about, a um, lot of data, uh, what we're seeing recently, 83% of data is still on premise. There's a lot of mm -hmm. uh, still moving to the cloud that still needs to occur. Uh, AI is the future generating these opportunities and trillions of dollars. You know, what are you seeing as the, or, or your recommendations, you know, what are you seeing as the big opportunities and the focal points? for end users and for for MSPs in, in this ecosystem? It's a sure. I think <laughs> Take uh, whatever yeah. part you want of it. Uh, yeah, I, I, I think ultimately what it comes down to is is the security aspect of all of this. Uh, you mentioned it, there, there's big data that's out there. Uh, we have a ton of data internally with across all of our, our users, all of our partners. It, it's, it comes down to making sure that we are as secure as possible because for every advancement that this industry is making, the bad guys are taking two steps ahead of that and they're thinking of ways and how to capitalize and how to make money in, in doing this as well. So what what I see the future of is is it become becoming even more security focused, security centric experts that MSPs have to be because of the the shift of where data is, how it's exposed, who has access to the data. And then you've got everything with AI that's just as good at, at compromising that data. So so what it all boils down to is just making sure that, that uh, these networks are secure, that they're protected, that that data, those users, those applications are under the watchful eye of, of somebody such as yourself, somebody who is the expert at, at taking care of them. Fantastic. Well, thank you, Eric. What a great conversation. And we look forward to collaborating more together in 2025 and, and beyond. Absolutely. It was an absolute pleasure. And uh, I look forward to continue this conversation every time I see you. Awesome. Uh, and thank you for watching in the chat room with Federal Technology. To dive deeper into our episodes and learn more about our work, visit betterworldtechnology.com. Stay connected by subscribing to our YouTube channel for exclusive content, behind the scenes insights, and much more. And if you enjoyed this episode, be sure to follow us on Spotify and tell a colleague. Keep innovating, keep connecting, and we'll see you next time.